Sometimes it's better not to know. The anomaly we will explore today is an info hazard. The GOC and the Foundation have joined forces in the past to deal with similar entities. For this century, anti memetic tools from both organizations have been deployed to prevent contagion. However, you must be warned once more. Sometimes it's better not to know. Warning. The following document is classified as a level 6 info hazard. Unauthorized access will result in termination through memetic kill agent. Proceed at your own risk. Memetic kill agent activated. Continued life signs confirmed. Retrieving file. Item number SCP-307. Object class. Keter. Special containment procedures. Hospitals and media worldwide are to be monitored for the appearance of SCP-307-1. Instances of SCP-307-2 are to be brought into Foundation custody and exploration of SCP-307-3 using SCP-307-2 may be conducted under the supervision of one clearance level 3 personnel. All individuals confirmed as SCP-307-2 are to be terminated immediately. Unaffected civilians who have acquired knowledge of SCP-307-3 are to be administered Class A amnestics. Personnel demonstrating reluctance or non-cooperation in the enactment of the above procedures are to be amnestized and transferred immediately, as containment breach of SCP-307 will likely result in an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. Description SCP-307-1 is a recurring hallucinogenic phenomenon with no apparent pattern regarding age, gender, race, health, or occupation. SCP-307-1 affects approximately individuals designated SCP-307-2 at any given time worldwide, with new instances constantly emerging despite the Foundation's efforts at elimination. Currently, no method other than that has been proven effective in the prevention or discontinuation of SCP-307-1. SCP-307-1 occurs on a seemingly random basis for an average of 4 times per day in each subject. The duration is typically between 50 to 80 minutes. Affected subjects claim to be transported to a location designated SCP-307-3. The description of SCP-307-3 is largely identical among subjects, but does not resemble any known place on Earth. Although SCP-307-1 often occurs in multiple subjects simultaneously, there are no confirmed cases of subjects meeting within SCP-307-3. While experiencing SCP-307-1, subjects are fully capable of physical movement, but report that they can only perceive reality through hearing and touch. As a result, subjects are capable of navigating SCP-307-3, while also maintaining communication with unaffected individuals. The sensations of sight, smell, and taste within SCP-307-3 are reportedly indistinguishable from reality. Any trauma or injury obtained within the context of SCP-307-1 will also manifest on subjects in reality. To date, there have been subjects who died from high-altitude impact, presumably due to actions taken while experiencing SCP-307-1. In addition, sound originating from within SCP-307-3 can be clearly perceived in reality within a 2 meter radius of SCP-307-2. These two attributes provide some evidence as to SCP-307-3's existence. Addendum 1 Interview Log 307-2C The first recorded account of SCP-307-3 Interview Log Interviewed SCP-307-2C A 68-year-old retired female from South Korea. Interviewer, Dr. Date, December 7, 20. Forward. Dialogue has been translated from Korean. Subject was amongst the first SCP-307-2 to be discovered and, at the time, the only mentally sound subject. Begin transcript. Good morning, Mrs. How are you feeling? Not well, I'm afraid. I have trouble sleeping. Examinations indicate that you are in good health. So is this caused by your condition? 
Conditioned? Oh, you mean the visions? Yes, I keep thinking about that place. Place? Subject notes. Yes, the times before it was blurry, like a dream. I remember just enough to tell that it was the same place. This time, though, it was different. I could see the landscape in perfect clarity. Please, describe this location in detail. It will sound utterly unbelievable, but please, believe me. After the vision started, I appeared on a narrow suspension bridge of sorts. It was day, but the sunlight seemed weak, as if it was obscured by smoke. There was a horrible stench in the air. Reminds me of garbage and rotting meat. Gagging. Are you alright? Yes, it's just that it brings back so many memories. Sorry, I'll keep going. I could see quite far because of the height, and all around me there was the ruins of a city. Well, I'm not sure. The buildings were different from anything that I'd ever seen before. More like giant trees than skyscrapers. They were so tall that I had to crane my neck to see the needle thin top. Some stood straight, but most have fallen or have been reduced to rubble. When the dizziness finally stopped, I went to the side of the bridge and looked down. The ground was out of sight, like the city continued forever into the darkness. I had to step away before I threw up or lost my footing. Thousands of bridges, like the one I stood on, seemed to be the only links between the buildings. However, many of them were broken as well. All these structures were made from a smooth, metallic material, but rather than being shiny, it was white as bone. Were you able to discern any living creatures among the ruins? No. I didn't see a single animal or person moving around. There were no plants either. You'd think that abandoned buildings would be overrun with them, but the whole place was dead and barren. I see. Were there other notable features? Subject shifts visibly uncomfortable. There was a tall black pillar in the distance. It was thicker and stood out from all the other buildings, so I grew curious and started walking towards it. I could have gotten there, but things appeared in my path. Lying on the ground, they were... Doctor, do I have to continue? I don't want to remember it. Please, can't we just... Stop? I understand that you are upset, but please resume. Soviet covers her mouth with one hand, beginning to cry. I'm sorry, it just startled me, that's all. The corpses, they were scattered everywhere. They seemed dried up and mummified, so they must have died long ago. I thought that they belonged to different animals at first, but I dared to look closer. They might have been people, but their bodies were, were wrong, twisted. There was a man, I think, whose bones bulged in parts and erupted out of his skin like extra limbs. He had his arms raised, probably clawing at those things when he died. A child was next to him. It must have been a child. Its head was melted like wax, but it was the same height as my grandson. Oh, God. Some of them were joined together, pressed into cubes. Oh, God, please. No, no, no. Rumbling of this nature continues for several more minutes. SCP-307-2C descends into a state of hysteria and refuses to offer further description. Persuasion is unsuccessful, and the subject is deemed unsound for continued interview. Thank you. That will be all for today.
in lu. Closing statement. The level of destruction observed and its psychological effect on subject is concerning. Future investigations will be concentrating on obtaining information regarding this location and its correlation to SCP-307-1. Doctor. Addendum 2. The presence of a large pillar is consistent among the reports from SCP-307-2. For subjects, the object is visible to the straight point within SCP-307-3 and appears prominent among the other structures in the city. Due to its potential significance, Dr. The leading researcher on SCP-307 strongly advocates its exploration. Exploration Log 307-GV Subject SCP-307-2GB, formerly known as Subject is a 23-year-old Australian male, formerly an illustrator. Subject is notable for possessing an exceptional memory. Supervising personnel, doctor. Equipment, none. Additional notes. Exploration attempts have been conducted previously, but were largely unsuccessful due to the non-cooperation of subjects. SCP-307-2GB volunteered expressing great desire in assisting the understanding and treatment of SCP-307-1. Begin Log 30 hours, 14th of July, 20. Doctor, it started. I'm in the city now. Can you see the pilot structure? Yes, it's not far. I think I can get there in an hour if there are no problems. Please, proceed as planned. All right. Oh god, this is confusing. Irregular footsteps on metal are heard, echoing somewhat. Ah, almost fell off. It's weird not feeling anything in here. Okay, I think I'm good now. Footsteps resume, now noticeably steadier. Subject occasionally slows, likely avoiding obstacles on the ground. Please, describe your surroundings and notify us of any deviation from your previous observations. So far, it's all stuff that I've seen before. The buildings are kilometers high. I'm pretty sure they're made out of metal, like the surface I'm walking on right now. The bridges are everywhere, crisscrossing and joining like spider webs. They're mostly intact, so I can go from one to the other as long as I'm careful. As for the time, the lighting is pretty good, so I think it's certainly more. There is a faint crunching noise, followed by the subjects cursing. Damn, step on his leg. Oh god, the smell. Duff had gotten used to it. Footsteps resume, but the subject's breathing is heavy. There are more of these things littered around, but joking from the stank, it's a lot worse inside the buildings. I'd prefer not to go in there and just stay out in the open. Is that alright? That's fine, continue. Subject progresses for 15 minutes without much event. During this time, the subject's reports consist of observable damage done to the structures. All accounts are consistent with the ones given by previous subjects. I'm waiting closer, but there are more weird things around here. There's a fighter jet with six wings that crashed on the bridge beneath me. It's been hanging there for a while. I can see the pilot in the cockpit. He split down in the middle, only half hanging out of each side. My god, this place is seriously messed up. Are there any other aircrafts? Yeah, they're all around and increasing. I don't think you've told me about this before, Doctor. Nope, you are the only subject who have ventured far enough to observe such an occurrence. Okay, guess I should watch out then. Don't know what this place is going to throw at me next. Oh, and the smell is getting a bit stronger. It's making me a bit sick. Interesting. Resume your curse, please. If you say so. Subject continues to report instances of damaged aircraft, amounting to over 40 identical ones within observable range. 20 minutes later, the subject's footsteps begin to slow. Alright, I'm looking up at the pilot now. It's much larger than I thought. It's a cylinder, around 40 meters thick, maybe more. Are there any unusual features? 
Um, I can see that it's got some colorful badges on it. Probably decoration. There are some stairs wrapped around it, leading to the top. And the smells... Oh god. What's wrong? The corpses. A whole damn crowd of them. They're gathered around the bottom, squeezed together. I can't even count how many there are. Jesus Christ. Please remain calm and assess the level of obstruction. Can you reach the staircase? Wait, are you... Are you saying that I should go through them? I'm not going to do it. No way. Please continue. You have volunteered, haven't you? I didn't know I would be dealing with this. That is the purpose of this exploration, mister. Currently, we lack sufficient information regarding these hallucinations, and we require your cooperation. You can help us find a treatment for your condition, and never have to visit this place again. SCP-307-2 GV is silent for almost one minute. Fine, I'll try. Just this once. This is insane. The subject's breathing becomes labored, and footsteps increase in frequency. Muffled crunching sounds are heard, along with the subject swearing and occasional stumbling. After three minutes, these noises diminish. There is a series of rapid taps, followed by a heavy thump. Subject begins to gasp loudly. Jesus, never again. There are momentary scrapping noises, followed by a few slow steps. Mister, we don't know when the occurrence will end, so please refrain from delaying an ascent. Alright, I was going to. The further away those things, the better. Doctor? Those bodies. They're pressed together, like they're climbing onto each other to get to this pillar. And, and some of them, the ones that have heads, they are all facing up like they are staring right at me. Or whatever's on the top of this thing. It's freaky. I think I'll get going now. Tapping sound starts. Subject remains silent for several minutes. Gradually, a faint rushing sound emerges, presumably wind from the increased altitude. Doctor, this place makes me uneasy. Considering what you've seen, that is understandable. No, Doctor, you don't understand. It's not just the corpses and buildings. This place isn't normal. What happened here wasn't normal. I first thought that there was some kind of natural disaster, like an earthquake or a meteor rain. Thought that's how the city got destroyed. But now that I'm up here, the whole place looks wrong. Why do you assume that? Well, from up here, I've been noticing something unusual about the buildings. They've not just been reduced to rubble and blown up. Some of them been curled, cut into sections, or even squashed in parts, like clay. It's more like they've been deformed. Like they're wires that I keep to and bend into weird shapes. Wind becomes more audible as the subject descends. I think it's the same with the jets. And even the bodies. Most of those corpses had human features, like they used to be people. An earthquake wouldn't do that. It doesn't make sense. Whatever happened here, it didn't just destroy, it played with this place. Understood. Please proceed. The wind gradually increases in volume. Footsteps pause. I've come across the first painting now. It's narrow and taller than I am. I can spot a few more around this pillar, right next to the stairs. It's like this whole thing was designed to show them. What does it depict? I think it might be telling some kind of story. There's a group of people in it, holding random objects. They're smiling, but other than that, their faces are blank. There's also a strange blue creature, but that might just be an exaggerated person. The lines in the background look like buildings in this city. I can't be sure, though. The style is surreal and hard to describe. It's completely different from what I usually do, but I can try drawing them when I get back. Yes, that will certainly be helpful. Okay, I'll see if I can memorize the others, too. Footsteps restart, 
and continue for 5 minutes. I'm on to the second one. It's even more confusing than the first one, but I can make out some aircraft. Six wings, like the ones I found a while ago. No report for 5 minutes. The durations imply that the paintings are evenly spaced along the pillar. Jesus. This one's... It's got some of those corpse creatures in it, but they look like they are still alive. God, I can almost smell them again. It might just be your imagination. You have been disoriented and put under stress for the last 50 minutes, so it's perfectly normal to confuse solutions with reality. I don't know what's real anymore. 5 minute duration. There's that stench again. I've gotten away from the bodies, but it's not fading. Actually, it's getting closer. Please remain calm, mister. You are perfectly safe, I assure you. Five minute duration. This one... It shows people having lines coming out of their brains, and they've sort of linked to the pillar. You think one of them might be me? That is an interesting observation. Yeah, I think it might help figure out what this is all about. God. I can't take it anymore. For the next five minutes, the subject mumbles incoherently under his breath while ascending. I've almost reached the end now, and the smell's getting really strong. Doctor, I don't know what's there, and I'm not sure if I want to find out. Mister, please continue. You have come this far. Doctor, I... Yeah, I suppose you're right. Better to see it through. The wind is loud now, almost muffling the subject's footfalls as he steps onto a different surface. Subject suddenly yells incoherently. There is a dull thought, followed by shuffling noises. Oh my god! What the f is that? What the f is that? Bridges, crying is audible. What do you see? I don't know. It's dry like all the others I've seen. But it's huge. It's got a face ten times bigger than mine. And the body. Oh god. So many arms. And it's missing chunks and it's curled. Mister, please don't panic. It's dead, isn't it? It doesn't pose any danger towards you. No, doctor. It's not just a corpse. It's the painting that it's lying on. The final one. I don't think it's finished, but I can't tell. Oh god. Why is that there? It's a... Redacted. Refer to addendum 4. Are you sure? Of course I am. Anyone would... Subject stops abruptly and, after momentary confusion, reports that the CP-307-1 has ended. Although in an emotionally unstable state, the subject says that he is able to recall the images with great clarity. In low. 9.41 hours, 14th of July, 20. Closing statement. Provided that scp 307 2 jbs account is reliable, I believe that we will be able to obtain information regarding scp 307 3 from the images that he recreates. Doctor. Addendum 3, 25th of September, 20. Graphic reproductions of painting on the surface of the pillar by scp 307 2 gv The images were shown to other subjects involved in later expeditions, who confirmed that they were highly accurate in terms of resemblance to the original artworks. Attachment 307.a Addendum 4, 27th of December, 20 Attachment 307.b Reproduction of the final painting Located at the top of the pillar. And low. Knowing about the existence of this anomaly is not dangerous by itself, but truly understanding it equals to an invitation for its crossing through the door of our minds. Keep listening under your own risk. A world was wrecked due to their thirst for knowledge. The entity its inhabitants discovered while exploring their stars, travel back home with them. Their memories, thoughts and words 
became the contagion agent that consumed those crews enough to leave it in. Even the powerful guardian deity of this world was unable to fight against the evil for long. The best it could do was to rescue those lucky enough to remain in blissful ignorance. As a last attempt to protect life in a world in ruin, the goddess painted the events as they occurred. Or maybe it was the last escape attempt of the evil entity working through its last victim. Just this once, agents, it's better if you are not informed. <laughs>